Hey guys, welcome back to part 9 of the series. It's crazy we're already on part 9. But today we're going to be talking about find first child and wait for child, so I hope you're excited. Uh, just a heads up, I may not have another video out tomorrow. I may or may not. Um, it's been I've been trying to get these out daily for you guys, but... I'm a little behind at the moment, so I may or may not have another one out tomorrow. If not, just wait for like next week or something and I should have them up again. But that being said, let's get into our comment question today. This has nothing to do with coding or anything like that, but what is your favorite school subject? So let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your answers. Now let's get into find first child and wait for child. So first, let's go ahead and start by inserting a script into server script service, and we'll call this... FFC and w, uh, WFC, find first child and wait for child. Um, so first off, what is the uh, find first child and wait for child? So it is a way for us to be able to um, find a child, right? So for example, maybe we want to find this uh, brand new part inside of the workspace. We could say workspace find first child brand new part to see if it's actually in there. So. Let's go ahead and come in here and let's go ahead. Actually, I'm going to put that block back. So insert a brand new part into your game and name it um, FFC block like that. Okay, all one word FFC block. And then let's just go ahead and make it green. Scale it up like that and anchor it. Okay, now how do we actually write out Pine First Child? So I like to always do it inside of an if statement, um, unless you know for sure that something's going to be in, in um, the workspace or wherever you're looking. So what you're going to say is you can say game.workspace or if game.workspace colon find first child, open and close parentheses, open and close quotation marks, and inside of here you put the name of the child. So for instance, this one, it is FFC block. Then print we have found ffc block okay so here is the ffc block right and it's going to check it's we're saying if we found an ffc block inside of the workspace so if we found the child ffc block remember a child is just what's what's inside of it so we're saying if we find a child inside of the workspace called ffc block then we'll print we have found ffc block and let's also add a wait to here just to make sure that it loads in so add that to your code and then click run. And you should see inside of the output, we have found FFC block because it did find it. So that's what you can do for that. Um, let me go ahead and head back into this script. And what we can do is we can use FFC again, uh, find first child again, by saying game.workspace, because now we know inside of here, we know there is an FFC block. So we can say game.workspace, go and find first child, FFC block dot brick color equals brick color dot random. Okay, so there we go. If we hit run, we should see after two seconds. Oh, hold on, my studio crashed. So after two seconds, it should change this to a random color because we found FFC, and as you can see, it has changed the color. Okay, so that is that. Let's go ahead and get into wait for child. So for this, we don't even need to wait too. This is why I really am excited to teach you guys this because having to say wait, blah, 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 inside of your scripts to wait for things to load in, not very efficient. So we can say local FFC block, remember creating a variable, equals to game.workspace colon wait for child. Same thing here, quotation marks, parentheses, FFC block. So it's saying we are going to keep waiting. I think the default is 20 seconds. Um, we're going to wait up to 20 seconds until we can find an FFC block inside the workspace. So that's a way for us to wait for it to load in. So here, instead of saying if game.workspace find for child, we can just say if FFC block. Okay. So if we found an FFC block, um, otherwise FFC block, the variable will be nil. So it just won't run. Um, but if we found an FFC block, then we can go ahead and change the color. As you can see, it's already changed the color because it waited until it loaded in. And once it had loaded in, uh, it changed the color. So that is a find for child and wait for child. Um, let me quickly show you how we can use this to make a kill brick in an obby. So let's go ahead and insert a part into the workspace, okay? Uh, you may or may not know how to do this. If you do know how to do that, that's fine, and you can skip ahead of this. Um, but let's just go ahead and make this red and anchor it, and we'll call this kill brick, okay? So 
here's something that you may not realize. You can put script inside of anything, okay? So for this one, we're going to put a script inside of the kill brick, not in here. Um, so we'll say, uh, we'll rename this to kill script. And then we can do something called, we can write script, okay? And whenever you write script inside of a script, it's just talking about the script we're inside of. So the kill brick script dot parent. So the parent of the kill brick script, which is the actual kill brick, right? Because the script is inside of it. So script dot parent dot touched. This is an event. Okay. So, um, I can't remember if we went over this or not, but touched is an event. Remember we have game dot players dot player added. This is another one. So whenever this brick is touched, we can say connect function hit. Okay. And this variable hit is a built in parameter. Um, and it is just whatever touched the part. Okay. So, we can say, so let me show you this really quickly. If I insert a dummy, so you can go into avatar and hit rig builder, block rig, and you'll see there's a dummy right here. So let's see, instead of here, let's just go ahead and drop down this dummy by clicking the arrow. Let's look at all the children, and we can see the right foot right here, okay? So we can see that the right foot is touching the lava. So if the script um, was running, it would detect that the right foot is touching it so that is going to be the hit right the hit would be the right foot in this case but we want to kill the player and to kill the player you use something called a humanoid all players have this object called a humanoid um, if there is a humanoid inside of it that just means it's a player or a dummy so if you scroll down there's a property inside of humanoids called health and if you set that health to zero that's how you kill a player so we can say if hit.parent, go on find first child, humanoid, then, so remember, let's go back to our dummy for a second. Uh, let me import one more. And as you can see, we have, for example, maybe the right foot touched the, the lava. So we're saying if in the parent of the right foot, so this dummy, right? Right foot's parent, which is this right here, the dummy. If we found a humanoid in it, then we can keep going. And the humanoid is what we want to change. So inside of the script, we can say hit.parent.humanoid, right? We know that there's a humanoid in there now because we've checked. Um, dot health equals to zero. And that is it. So if we go ahead and play this instead of run this, we can set the player's humanoid's health to be zero. So uh, as you can see, we have a lot going on in this game. Um, let's wait for that. There we go. That explodes. That drops. All this good stuff. And as you can see, we were just killed by this kill brick. So that is fine for child and wait for child. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing. I'd appreciate it a lot. We are so far into the series. There, remember, there are only 14 parts in the series, so we're only a few away from finishing it up. So I hope you're excited um, for that. And I will see you guys in a future video. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment or join my Discord server. Either way works. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon.